you may be wondering what's going on. We are obviously surrounded by shoes. These are all, I'm pretty sure these are all of my shoes. I like searched high and low to make sure I got them all. It's not like a crazy amount, but it's not a little amount. I, I, I like my shoes. <laughs> For someone who has um, foot issues, per se, I, I definitely like my shoes. I know it's summer, but I'm still in spring cleaning mode, getting rid of things. I let, Yesterday I went through all of my jewelry. I got rid of everything I don't wear. And now we are bringing that same energy to the shoes today. I have now gotten to the point in my life where I will no longer wear something if it makes me want to cry. I, If I'm walking home drunk at the end of the night barefoot because I couldn't walk in the shoes, they are leaving today. They are leaving today. I may keep one or two cute things that are not ideal, but for the most part, we're getting rid of uncomfy shoes today. And I thought I would take this opportunity to talk with you guys about specifically club foot issues, but you don't have to have club foot to relate to this content. We are going over what I'm keeping, why, and what I know works for me. I've gotten to the point where I can look at a pair, if I'm shopping for shoes, nine times out of 10, I can look at a pair of shoes, look at the structure of them, what features they have, and know if it's gonna work for me or not. So I thought I would share some of the things I've learned over the many years of shoe accumulation, what I'm getting rid of, why I'm getting rid of it, um, things that I like, things that I'm keeping, consistent, shoe trends that work for me, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're doing today. And we are going to split things up into categories here, which I'm probably just gonna speed you through. I also wanna take this opportunity to make some shoe recommendations for my fellow clubbies out there. I wanna say, you know, a disclaimer, just because I've been called out in the past, but disclaimer, I know that not all um, cases of club foot look the same, what works for me, may not work for someone else. The issues that I have may be different from the issues that someone else has. So if a shoe recommendation that I get you today does not work, please don't hate me. <laughs> and if you don't have club foot, but would still like some recommendations, these are gonna be some great recommendations. If you are a supinator, which is someone who walks on the outside of the foot, which is what I do because of my club foot, I supinate. I see so many resources out there for people who are searching for shoes that are good for pronation and neutral feet, but not a lot of supination. So this is the video for you if you're looking for dress shoes, casual shoes, running shoes, training shoes for supination. So let's speed through the process of me going through all these and separating them into categories so that we can attack this systematically. <laughs> I found a few more pairs. <laughs> oh, my an earring back. You can never have too many of these. This looks just as messy, but this has some organization to it. Trust me. You know what? We're gonna start with flip flops because it's the most seasonally appropriate right now. Flip flops, sandals, we'll start with those. We'll do this little pie right here. This is just like flat, casual shoes, I guess. Some of these shoes, I wasn't really sure where to categorize them, like they could belong to either category, but we're gonna call these flat casual. And I guess my next smallest pile would be here. These are sneakers, running shoes, casual sneakers, training shoes, that general sneaker category. And then we're gonna hop over to here, which is basically every shoe I own with a heel. That's not a boot, because that brings us to our last huge mountain category of boots. Can you tell my favorite kind of shoe? And we'll get to why that is, because boots are great for so many reasons and I can't wait to talk about it. But we are going to start with flip flops and I'm excited because I'm already looking and I see something I want to get rid of. We're gonna start with these babies and these because I'm getting rid of them for the same reason. These are your classic old navy, cheap as dirt, come in every color pair of flip flops. Um, I don't believe these are old navy, but it's the same concept. You got like a foam single sole situation with this plastic thong in between your toes. And I, I was gonna throw them over inside the bed, but like I wanna be able to reference them. We'll throw one over for emphasis. And I hate them. I hate them and they're gone. 
Here's why. First of all, cheap shoes, you pay for what you get. You know, there's exceptions to the rule. <laughs> Excuse Greg, he's on the phone right now. When you get cheap shoes, expect cheap quality. And that's the thing, you're not, look at this, completely flat. There's no support whatsoever. I'm completely enabled to walk on the side of my foot. There, there's nothing stopping me. Not to mention, as I've discussed before in other videos, but in case you haven't seen that, um, I'll say it again, my toes are very, very close together and they're kind of curled together like this. Um, trigger warning, I'm about to show you my feet. I'm like not uncomfortable with feet at all because I've been forced to get so up close and personal with mine and the concept of just like feet and the state of feet in general that I don't really understand like foot phobia thing. So you don't like feet, like don't watch this. Here are my toesies. But basically my toes like curl under and together, like next to each other, they're very close. So when you put like a little prong in between them, it's blisters galore. Oh. And I forget about it every time because these are, you know, I'll like slip these on. Greg's like, oh, you wanna go walk around town? And these are by the front door, I'm like, sure. And then I walk 10 minutes, I'm like, oh, that's why, this is why these suck. Also, this material, like this foam, is very easily, I mean, you won't see it in these because I actually don't wear these very often. I threw, I threw the wrong pair off the bed. I'll show you on the other ones. Can you tell that it's become accustomed to my foot? The way it curves right here, the way it comes down and it flips up. There's some wear and tear on the outer edge. Basically this material, this foam, doesn't really have a lot of integrity. So if my foot wants to do something, hi monks, it's gonna do it. And this isn't gonna stop it. And I need a shoe that's gonna kick my foot into shape. I need a shoe that's gonna say, listen here, buddy. This is how we're walking today. And this shoe says, eh, what do you feel like doing? I don't want that energy. Here are the flip flops casual flip-flops I will be keeping. Slide, who doesn't love slides? These are actually not my favorite Adidas slides ever. Um, I'm due for another pair, the, 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 like, the sleeve parts peeling off. I had another pair that I got a great deal at Marshalls, so it's like, I loved them even more because they were such a special bargain. And I left them at rugby practice and um, no one ever like said they found them, so RIP. And those ones were the ones with like a little, you know the, the Adidas slimes that have like this little spikies on the sole? Oh, it felt so good. It was like the massage my poor feet needed after all of the abuse. This, I mean, doesn't have the greatest structural integrity and support and you know, it's not like it makes up everything that those lack, but there is some support. It's definitely a little thicker by the arch of the foot, which I need. Look, not every shoe is going to be the corrective shoe for you. Some, we all know we need a pair of like bullshit shoes to go get in the mail or take the trash out. These are these shoes. These are the shoes that I wanna put on after either I'm running out for like two seconds or these are the shoes that like I put on like immediately after the rugby game's over or rugby practice is over, I pull off my cleats, which I don't have here. I didn't. Love slides, love the fact that it's not like a thong flip flop and you can just click it on. This is like, like take it easy, you know, relax. These are those shoes. Last in this category are these, and these are my newest pair of shoes in this category. These are Cushion Air. They're like a, a Birkenstock style. I wanted to get, I wanted Birkenstocks for the longest time. Those are expensive. <laughs> so I got these, these are like a knockoff, but I love them. First of all, the brand's called Cushion Air. So you can guess this sole, nice. And look at this thick sole. Like I hate this trend of like single sole, thin sole. Like some of these cute strappy sandals out there and the sole is like paper thin. Who is enjoying that? But these are great because the soles are cushioned, they're thick, they're supportive. There's like some contouring in the sole. It's not just a flat sole. It's definitely raised on the arch. You can see that I'm peeling off right here. Like this flat part is peeling off because this is the part of my foot that misbehaves the most. It's like that outside ball of the foot. It wants to touch the ground. So that's why 
on these shoes that's my problem area on these shoes that area of the shoe is like the most reinforced part of the shoe so love that monkey stop it I promise you I'm not just like struggling to be cute. This is actually kind of irritating. Anyway, they also come in wide sizes, which is great. These are a six wide. I also love that this top, at least I think so. I haven't had to adjust. Oh no, is it? Hold on a second. I gotta make sure that I'm not about to spew some bullshit right here and I actually know what I'm talking about. Okay, no, I know what I'm talking about. Nope, we're good. Anyway, I, I, for a second I was worried that these buckles on the top were like f not functional. They are. What I love about that, I haven't had to adjust them because they actually came perfect as is. Surprisingly, that's usually not the case. But I got like a fat upper foot. Here, here's my first visual tip when you're shopping for shoes. If you see a shoe and you have, you know, chubby club foot like I do, and it has like a strap near the ankle or near the top of the foot. You know, I don't have problems near my toes. Like this strap was never gonna be the issue, but a strap farther up, if it's not adjustable, sometimes it's just like too low and I can't get my fat foot in there and I'm like busting out the top of it. So an adjust if it's gonna have a strap right there, if I could pick between not having a strap and having an adjustable strap, adjustable strap because it's more support. So we're gonna keep those. Let's go over my flat casual shoes. And I think I'm keeping every single pair. These are Steve Madden's. They're just like really 90s-esque platform mules. I don't really know what you'd call them. It's like a single strap up here. And like what I was just saying about the strap, what I like about this is that it's elastic. Like this this big like sleeve part right here is like really stretchy it's comfortable i can get my, my chubby foot in there and it holds it snug also a platform and i'll touch on this later too a platform is great because it gives you like all the height without having to wear heels so it's kind of like a faux heel experience these are cute on trend supportive and comfortable these i just got can't really make too much commentary on these. We will see. They're on a probationary period. These are Catherine Melandrinos. These are wonderful. I don't wear them enough because honestly, like they're not the cutest pair of shoes I have, but they're so comfortable. They're like uh, laced up moccasins almost. They're really great for like a casual work look. I can get away with these in the office, but they are so comfortable. I tried these on once at a Cabela's, like on a road trip with my family. And it's like, I gotta have them. So when I got home, I searched high and low for them online and ordered them. They just feel like a cloud. I don't really know how to describe it. The sole's really soft. So there's a lot of shock absorption, but it's not soft to the point where it wears away easily. Again, these are Keens. We stand. We move on to heels. Because this is a hot topic and I already know what I'm gonna do about some of these. Let's go over what works and then we'll go over what doesn't. I'll just pick these because they're on top and I wore them last weekend, so pretty recently. These are Tommy Hilfiger like espadrilles. Really cute, very summery, strappy. These are like my heel strappy sandal go-to. I won't buy any more shoes that look like this because I'm gonna reach for these every time. Like I, there's no reason to get any other shoe. I really don't know how to tell you like why these work. I just know that they do. Like I, when I first tried them on in the store and most of these shoes by the way I've gotten from like Marshalls or TJ Maxx. They always have good shoes. I, I get lucky there a lot. They have a strap in the back. It's gonna keep you supported. When it comes to a heel, a strap in the back is always good because I, I don't feel like I'm gonna fall out of the shoe, which is kind of like a phobia that I have when it comes to heels that I'm gonna like fall in front of a bunch of people and make a fool out of myself. Especially when the strap is secured in here, your ankle is in. It's not going anywhere. The heel's not very high. It's like just high enough 
to kind of get that feel where you're like, mm, my booty's like popped out, I feel elevated, click, clack, click, but it's not absurd. The sole is really soft. The leather is really soft. It doesn't cut in. Oh, if you feel like you could handle a little bit of a heel, Tommy Hilfiger Espadrille Sandals. I don't know if they sell this one anymore, but if they um, make any styles like it. Sorry, there's a pebble stuck in there. So we're keeping those. These are Report. Literally never heard of them except for this shoe. These look rough because I wear them constantly. They're like uh, mules, I guess. It's a heel, kind of looks like a pointy toed boot, but there's no back to it. It's a taupe color, but it's like a subtle crocodile pattern on it. I don't know if you could tell. But what I like about these is <laughs> it's almost like the antithesis of that shoe where all the support's in the back and you like show off the heel in the front. This one, there's no support in the bag. You can just slide into them, but that's fine because the front is so covered and secured that you can't see all the kind of weird contortions my foot's doing under there. Like my toes are all curled under and clubbed as hell and you can't tell. Thank the Lord that block heels have come back into trend. Add that on to my shopping tip, adjustable straps near the ankle, block heels. The bigger the heel, the better. I love them, they're so comfortable. I love a good mule moment. I don't know why it's my favorite. These, oh my God, they're so cute. These are Cupid spelled with a Q. These are also another Marshalls find. These are like a slip, slip on, mule, slide, peep toe situation. Uh, adorable, Greg calls them my grandma's shoes, but like these are the dancing salsa woman emoji in a shoe. And every time I wear them, I get compliments. They're so different, they're so unique. And what I like about them is, look at this block heel. It's low, it's wide. You don't feel like that you're teetering on anything. And all of the drama is here and like the material and the, the frills. So you don't really feel like you need this like big crazy heel because it brings all the femininity with the pattern. And um, they're just so cute. So far I've gotten rid of two. <laughs> Two pairs of plastic flip flops, it's not going well. I'm not gonna speak on these shoe dazzle ones because I've already talked about them in one of my quarantine vlogs. If you want to hear about that, you can go to my quarantine vlog playlist. Uh, I believe that it's in the title of the vlog. It's shoe dazzle, club foot, shoe review, whatever. But again, same concept here, block heel, low. Again, these are another pair that I talked about in my review. These are from Shoe Dazzle. You can see it's like a block heel. It has this gladiator lace situation. If you want to hear more about these, again, please go check out my Shoe Dazzle review in my quarantine vlogs. These. It really does break my heart that I'm going to get rid of these. These are a pair of really nice shoes. These are Vince Camuto's. I got these at Nordstrom Rack, I believe. They're just, they're not comfortable. The sole is paper thin. Even though it does have this like Velcro adjustable strap at the top, I think they're just too, a little too big. They're a seven. So I'm like flopping out of them. So we're gonna consign these. I actually have a dust bag for them. And out of respect, because they hold no ill will. I really wanted this to work. I'm not gonna throw you off the bed. I'm gonna place you gently. Au revoir. <sighs> anyway, all right, these Nine West. Nine West, honestly, does a pretty good job. I just said that I like, if you don't reach for them, get rid of them, but I don't reach for these and I, I think I'm gonna give them a try. You know what, there's a get rid of, a keep, and then there's a probationary period. We're putting these on probation. The reason I like these is because they have so many of the features that I'm talking about are essential. So we have a block heel, we have ankle support. So this wraps around your ankle like twice. And this like peep toe moment right here, it's not just like a thin strap across. Like this is a fair amount of coverage here. Which brings us to our next point is that I love a nude shoe. And the reason why is because I'm very self-conscious about the shape of my feet. Sometimes in some shoes, like you can just kind of tell, like be like, mm, something, something's up with that girl. But when you have a nude shoe, it kind of visually, and by nude, I mean like this is nude for me. This is by no means nude for a more melanated individual, but nude for me. When you have a nude shoe and you're wearing it, it just kind of visually blends like everything together. There's not a lot of, there's not as much contrast between the shoe and your foot. So it's a little more seamless and you're not gonna notice anything off as much if that makes sense. So we're gonna 
put these on probation and move on to my next pair of Nine West nude shoes. So these, you know what? I'm not really sure. Let's give it a walk. You know, I can tell that these are the sort of shoes, I can tell, I know why I bought them because I can tell that these are the sort of shoes that you put on and go, wow, these are comfortable, I gotta get them. And then you wear them to like a wedding and an hour in you wanna cry sort of thing. Here's the issue. With a pointy toed shoe, if I don't have enough support, if I'm sliding down to the front, which I'm apt to do, oh, you're crammed down there. You don't have to have club foot to know that issue. I'm really sliding down because look how tiny that heel is. Yes, it's low. It's a tiny little pump, but it's like a stiletto heel almost. That's not comfortable. I don't know why I own anything with a heel that tiny, but um, it's it's gotta go. We will keep these pointy toed pumps because look at that beautiful block heel. Oh, these are Mark Fisher. These definitely fit a little better. These are six medium pointy toed heels. Don't scream comfort, but I'm keeping these because they're a black pump. Like I need a black dress shoe. It's just a staple I have. So I will keep these until I find something that I like better and then I'll get rid of these because you know what if I find a shoe that's more comfortable than these and it's a similar enough style I'm not gonna reach for these. Let us move on to sneakers. My Reeboks like slip on knit shoe. I talked about these in my May favorites. I'm not gonna talk about them again other than provide an update that I am definitely seeing some wear and tear on the outer edge. I'm trying not to wear them as much so that they last longer, but I'm pretty much reserving these for like bike riding because it's a very minimal impact on the shoe. So I had to switch out my memory card. What was I saying? These are, I don't really have much to say about these. These are my Adidas Off Court Campus. Something, I forget what these are called. Um, they're just a simple three stripe, they're navy blue, suede, really cute. This is kind of like my kid's moment. This is like the sneakers I'd wear with like a cute sundress. And then my other Adidas like non-training shoe I have are these. These are uh, Sambas. Pretty famous shoe. They're like an indoor soccer shoe. Again, a classic three stripe situation. This really iconic tongue. And then it's got like the, the uh, man, I forget what they call that. That classic rubber sole. I had to search high and low for these. These are actually boy shoes and I've talked about that. If you can get away with buying kids shoes if your feet are small enough, do it because they're so much cheaper and they don't make sambas in women's size. My brother has been wearing sambas for years and years and years. I've always loved them. I love the look of them. They're just so cool and I've only found them in men's and boys. And obviously I can't fit into the smallest men's size, so I had to buy them, buy them in boys, and I'm so glad I finally did. I love these shoes. And the reason why I'm introducing these together is because I don't have that much to say about them. It's not like they're entirely supportive. You can tell they're pretty flat shoes, but I just want to talk about Adidas as a whole. I love Adidas shoes for the most part. Um, I will pick Adidas over any other popular athletic brand because Adidas shoes just fit my feet so well. I've been wearing, you know, a version of those Adidas slides forever. I've had a pair of Adidas slides at any given point for my entire life because early on my mom found that they just worked for me. I think they're wider than other shoes. They run a little wider, especially in like the toe box area. Like I said, these are like my Keds moment. Keds, too narrow for me. And these with the rubber soles, like my Converse moment. Converse, too narrow for me. Keeping both of these, obviously obsessed. Move on to these. These are Sperry's actually, surprisingly. I'm actually, my family's from Maryland. So like boat shoes have been a thing in my family for like every male in my family owns a pair of like ratty ass falling apart. They live by the back door, like pair of Sperry's. Like they smell like feet because they're functional. They're no slip. They're great. I don't do, I mean, I live in Jersey for now. So it's not like I do a lot of boating. I say about them because they're cute. I'm going to keep them because 
They're functional. They're the only pair of no slip shoes I have. So if I need no slip for some reason, if I'm going to be going on a boat, I'm gonna wear these. I actually did own a pair of like the traditional leather Sperry's in high school because that was like the shoe of choice for most people. I went to Catholic high school and you had to, there was a uniform and Sperry's were like one acceptable form of shoe you could wear with your uniform. And literally every other shoe option there was was like so everyone chose Sperry's and I had like the classic leather version. So if you're looking for boat shoes and you have my feet, don't wear those ones. I looked like, not to say there's anything wrong with having club feet, but like I just look clubbed as hell, man. I was like all sorts of turned out and no, no. I think if you need boat shoes, I would suggest going in the more like sneaker direction because there's, you know, you have that coverage all the way up to the ankle instead of, you know, how like Sperry's kind of cut midway down the foot. This would be my boat shoe of choice. We're gonna keep those. We're gonna go on to cleats. I have two pairs of cleats. These are actually Nikes. The other pair is Adidas. I know I said I'd pick Adidas over other brands, but with cleats, it's kind of a different story. I'm not looking for like wide comfort. I really wanna be strapped in. Even if that means like it's cutting off circulation in my feet because I'm there to be functional, I'm there to be secure, and I have gone through a journey, a journey with cleats ever since I started playing rugby in 20. 12 like I really struggled with finding the right cleat. I finally found the right design that works for me It's this the other pair of cleats. I have the adidas. It's basically the same exact design The reason why I like these is because the studs the studs Are a hard plastic. They're not first of all They're not metal because those aren't allowed and they're not rubber which was my issue I would get the first pair of cleats I got, they were like football cleats. They were high up the ankle, which I thought was a great idea. And if I could find a shoe that's basically this design with a high top, I'm, I'm first in line to buy it. But the problem were the studs, the actual cleats on the bottom. Anyway, as I was saying, the studs on the bottom of these are like a hard plastic. The studs on the cleats that did not work for me time and time again were always hard rubber, which just, it has give. It, like they were solid when I first got them, but it has some give to it if it's rubber. And you know, the whole issue I've talked about before is if you lean out on the outside of your foot, that's the first part of the shoe that's gonna give way, that's going to wear down, that's going to lose its structure. So what would happen is that the studs on the outer edge would get like shaved down almost. So it would exacerbate my rolling issue because I'd have all these studs intact on the inside, keeping the inside of my foot elevated and none on the outside, keeping the outside of my foot elevated. So I would just like that, which is true for all shoes that do that, but with cleats it was especially painful with the studs it made it that much worse it was like a shoe on mini stilts and you just terrible absolutely terrible imagine having a cleat that basically only had studs on the inside of the foot oh my god so awful so with these these are hard plastic and i've had these for over a year now going to practice twice a week games most Saturdays, they are intact. If you like looked up close in the microscope, you can see that the outside ones, the edges are a little more smooth than the inside ones, but I don't notice at all when I'm playing. And like I said, the other pair that I have are exactly like this. And the reason why I have two pairs, and I'll go into that when I talk about my next pair of shoes as well, is because I like to keep similar shoes on deck and cycle through them, go back and forth, so that I don't just like wear one pair into the ground and exacerbate the problem, make it worse and worse and worse. If you spread out the wear over multiple pairs of shoes, at least two pairs of shoes, if not multiple pairs of the same shoe, they're going to last longer because you're not beating the same pair over and over again. So I have this pair in my backpack because I brought a backpack to touch the other day. I'll have the other pair in like my game day duffel bag and I'll play those for games. And so far both pairs have not shown like really any signs of wear. And I probably bought them like five, six months apart. Also got them at Marshall's in the kids section for $15. When's the last time you saw cleats for $15? Crazy. Yeah, these are a US 5 Youth. Again, 
you know, bring that same energy to this next thing. This might be, like I'm probably gonna timestamp this part. So this is the part of video that most people are probably anticipating the most, I'm making assumptions here. But just because this is the question, as someone with clubfoot and as someone who's active, as a personal trainer, this is the shoe question I get asked most frequently. What is your running shoe slash training gym shoe recommendation? I have a few. That could be a whole video on itself. It's just running shoes for people with club feet. I will say, and excuse me, I'm just bringing up um, my order history on these shoes so that I don't get any of the model names wrong. Highly recommend, just in brief, highly recommend the brand Hoka. Hoka One. Hoka One is a is a brand that floats around a lot in clubfoot circles. The reason why I love that so much is because the sole, I've talked about this before, the sole is like blown out wider than the rest of the shoe. So rolling over onto the side of your foot is a, um, a little harder when you're wearing Hoka's. All right, I finally got the correct info. These are my preferred sneakers. Running shoes of all time and by of all time i mean up until this point right now in my life who knows i'll discover something later but these are adidas no surprise these are the 90s valasian sneaker i don't really think they're advertised as a running shoe but i'm pretty sure that these are designed like these are based off of a 90s running shoe design you can tell they're really chunky. It's like very much like a New Balance dad kind of moment, which just so happens to be pretty in right now. So that worked. <laughs> I had a funny moment with my brother. He saw me wearing these shoes and he's like, oh, don't tell me that you bought into that chunky sneaker trend. And I was like, well, no, actually I bought these because these were one of the only shoes when I went to DSW to get running shoes. These were one of the only shoes that were uh, wide enough to fit my, my insole, my orthotic. And he was like, oh, well, now I feel like a giant asshole. It's like, yeah, yeah, buddy. But it's true. I went and I picked out a bunch of, I went a day, I was like, I need new shoes. The shoes I had weren't falling apart because again, I only had one pair of sneakers and I didn't cycle through any pairs and I ran them into the ground until it was an emergency because they were so worn that I was getting no support. My feet were in pain. I was like, I need new shoes now. So I went to DSW. I picked out every shoe that A, looked like they could fit my insole and B, I would even slightly be interested in being seen in because sometimes you can get the most comfortable shoes in the world and the most supportive shoes in the world, but if they're fugly as hell, you're not gonna wear them. You're just not, like be honest with yourself. Are you really gonna wear like the chunkiest, most orthotic looking shoe in the world that you hate? But you're like, oh, I'll wear them for the good of my feet. So I was like, you know what? These are kind of trendy looking. They're Adidas, which I love. Give them a shot. And I love them. And the reason why these are my number one is because Hoka's are great and everything. But they're definitely even chunkier than this. Like they're a little bit more brick. These come across as a little more lightweight. I feel more comfortable running in them, more buoyant in these. My only co caveat, 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 caveat. My only caveat with these is that you can see that the heel in the back kind of goes in and slips in. The sole is like blown out, which you know I love. This ensures that I'm, I'm not doing any rolling, but because it's in like this, and I don't, I think these are more for the look, less for the function, but since it's in like this, I'm doing a lot of friction, you can tell. And I think I may have talked about this in my, in my Clubfoot products video, but there is, so much like so much wear and tear on the inside ankle part I don't know. <laughs> I look like such a fool I'm such a fool okay here we go can you see that can you see where that fabric is just worn all the way down there was a point in which I was like wow I'm so sad I love these but I'm getting the worst ankle blisters and I realized because I was wearing cheap socks with them these in combination with nice thick high enough socks that cover your ankle look you can get like a nice crew sock you can get those starter socks i talked about my main favorites pair them with this you got such a good princess diana running around doing errands kind of look you know scrunch those socks down really lean into it or if you're not into the crew sock look get some bombas because they're 
again, talk to about those in my club foot product videos. You can tell, I, I go into the same things all the time because when I find a thing and it works, I stick with it. But Bombas, talked about that in my club foot product video if you wanna hear more about that. But basically they have a nice like cushioned area, like a cushy section of the sock exactly where I need it in the back there. So, 90s Blasian sneaker. 10 out of 10, I've done some of my best running in these. You wouldn't think so, because it's not designed. Look, something that has a little bit more of a silhouette like that screams running, screams aerodynamic, screams performance. But me and you, we can't, we can't do that. We can't run in this, you know it. We need something that looks a little bit more like something from Costco, like just, But anyway, um, these are a little filthy looking because I really started wearing these in and I was like, I'm not practicing what I preach here. So I got another pair. <laughs> like I just bought them on Amazon. Usually when it comes to shoes, I don't buy shoes online for the most part. I told my mom I bought these on Amazon. She's like, you bought sneakers on Amazon online? You, without trying them on? But like, cause I knew that these worked and I saw these and I was like, we'll just get the same size, we'll be fine. I'm pounding the pavement in these right now because they're new, I'm putting some miles on them. Once I've broken them in a little bit more, I will do another run, a few runs in these. Go back to the gray, vice versa. Really spread out my wear between the two. Big fan, Adidas, 90s Valasian sneaker. Check it out, please. And you can see, look, they're like, they have, these ones have my huge, uh, Here we go. Ah. I have my th orthotics in here. I took out, there's like a little a flimsy little BS kind of liner in there. Took those out, put these orthotics in. Don't be like me and leave your sneakers tied. Don't, don't do that. Don't do it. But sometimes when you put like big orthotics into sneakers, it looks weird. They're like pushing out the sides of the shoe. It looks like you're trying to fit a triangle into a circle or whatever. But these, like, I, they still look as sleek as they do without the orthotics. And now, they're gonna move on to my favorite, favorite type of shoe, boots. Boots, baby, boots. I'm just gonna go off of like what's at the top here. Here are my riding boots. And by riding boots, I mean just the style. I don't actually ride horses, but like, you know, everyone needs a pair of like brown leather preppy boots. I love these for so many reasons. One, the zipper goes all the way down to the ground. When there's a boot that has like a long, like, I don't know, sleeve? Like, I don't know what you call it. And there's no zipper and you're just expecting me to like contort my foot all the way down into the bottom without opening it up at all? Like, no, sir, no, sir. That is not going to work. I really need all this access. I love that it opens up. Like some just open up halfway, which for the most time works. Some just have like a little zipper at the bottom, but don't actually open from the top. That rarely works. Sometimes it can. I think I maybe I have one boot like that in here. Ugh. I also love these. I've had them forever. You can tell like they're pretty worn looking, but the thing I love about brown leather boots, especially riding boots, the more you wear them and the more broken in and worn they look, like the more authentic they look. I think with every year they look better and better. But I've had these since high school, high school maybe. And for reference, I'm tw 27 years old. I'm 27 years old. So I've had these for maybe, I would not doubt if I had these for 10 years. And for 10 years, like obviously there's like a little wear down on the outside sole, like a little bit, but for 10 years, barely. And let me talk to you about uh, this brand. These are Cole Hans, a little bit pricier. This is a designer brand. But Cole Hans, for me, I don't know what it is about them. They just, they work. Like the other day I was shopping with my mom and I tried on a really cute pair of shoes. And they were so comfortable. I didn't end up buying them only because I didn't need them and I didn't want to spend the money. But I was just like, oh, these are so good. And I looked down at the bottom and it said Cole Hans. I told my mom, I was like, these are Cole Hans. She goes, well, there you go. That's why you like them. They're a quality shoe and they really last. They last for the amount of like pressure and tension I put on shoes, the beatings that my shoes get because of my feet. These stick them out, these can take. In that vein, we're going to continue with these. These are also Cole Hans. These are more like a Chelsea boot. I know I just said that I like a zipper to get into a boot, otherwise it's problematic, but these don't have a zipper, but they 
do you see how much that opening stretches oh my god and then you have like the little ring on the back so i can put my finger in the ring and just pull them on and these are one of the shoes that they did in collaboration with nike they have like a nike air sole so i can really walk around a lot in these these were my go-to shoe when i lived in the city and i had my internship down on like fifth avenue i hated transferring so i would get off the red line from van Cortland, like down by rockefeller center and i would just walk the rest of the way instead of transferring for another few blocks because i was like i don't want to transfer i will just walk and I walk to my internship every single day wearing these shoes. I just love like the masculine vibe of, of a Chelsea boot. Ugh, I just, again, here's another like flat boot moment. It's a, like a, a sweater cuff kind of boot. Yeah, these are Shoe Dazzle. I know I said that you guys spend money to get quality, but Shoe Dazzle is one of those exceptions where I found a lot of good shoes from Shoe Dazzle, surprisingly, considering all the issues I've had. You can dress these up or dress them down. You can make them really casual, like flannel and jeans. I like them a lot. And the reason why I like them is because, I mean, they're cute and comfortable, but also it has like hooks on the top here where the laces go so that, see the laces sit down here. You could tie them down here and keep this part flappy a little bit, or you could hook them around the hooks and tie them all the way up to the top to really be secure in there but i like the hooks rather than it being threaded all the way to the top because it's really easy starting to unlace them it's really easy to just unhook them real quick and that way you can open it up really wide again to get your foot in there so we're going to continue with again another lace-up boot these are like my badass like combat like i want to kick some ass kind of like boot a tall black combat boot i love because again it has like the hooks on the top portion instead of the hole so you can open up really easily but also it zips all the way down usually when i see a shoe that's like laced all the way to the top they're really like high knee i have no hopes of getting into it i'm like there's no way but these make it happen for me and they're comfortable to walk in plus anything that's gonna keep you trapped in all the way up towards your knees like, you know, I just love being locked and loaded. Like, my feet aren't going anywhere, you know? Breeze through some of these. Again, these are some tall boots. We love a tall boot. I love them. They're, like, knee highs or thigh highs, but also, like, western. I believe these are also Shoe Dazzle or Just Fab. Basically, same company. These are Just Fab, but these are really comfortable. This inside is, like, padded. It has what I mentioned before, just kind of like a zipper on the lower portion, which like isn't as great as all the way up to the top, but the opening's big enough that it's easy to get my foot in. These are also from Just Fab, I believe. Oh no, Shoe Dazzle. I really love, look, big block heel. It's got like a tread, almost like Timberland bottom, a lot of traction, very padded cushy it's a heeled boot but it's a low heel you're trapped in there there's something about the combination of the camo and like that hunter orange where i just it got me they're comfortable they're a little narrow but again a little bit of sacrifice sometimes you need it my favorite boots i love a booty like a little ankle booty i love a pointed boot that is like my favorite kind of shoe a pointed ankle booty there's just something so like western rock and roll kind of about it when i wore these shoes for the first time to work like i got so many comments about like okay boots because i walked in like this town ain't big enough for the both of us kind of vibes they're white shoes which i got a little dirty but they are worth it they are so cute this elastic part is has a lot of give so i can get my foot in there very easily it's not too pointy where like my toes are really shoved up there uncomfortable Thick block heel, but low. So rock and roll. Love them. As per usual, I'm experiencing some technical difficulties with my camera because that's my brand. So instead of waiting six hours and 53 minutes, that's a joke. To resolve the issue, I'm just going to film the rest on my iPhone because that's how we do it here. Anyway, what was I saying? I'm talking about my rock and roll boots. I love a pointy toed ankle booty. That's why I've bought several pairs of ankle booties. These are French Connection. Oh, so comfortable. I love an ankle booty because it's like, hey, just cause I have club feet doesn't mean I want, don't wanna experience a heel. Here's a heel for you. Also, here's a zipper so you can get your foot in, but all the coverage to keep you trapped in. 
Also, I'm kind of insecure about how my feet look in heels because the contortions I make to make it work are a little interesting. So this 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 covers all the uh, behind the scenes work. And these are actually like a blue, purple, indigo velvet and like a subtle crocodile snakeskin kind of print. You can't tell on camera because it's it's like a shift. These were so expensive and so cute that I saw them and I was like, I really want those, but I don't want to spend the money on them. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try them on because chances are with my feet, they're going to be really uncomfortable. And then that will kind of like get the idea out of my head. And I tried them on and they were really comfortable. And I was like, shit, <laughs> I guess I have to buy them. And then, you know, I thought I had the formula down. You know what? Ankle booties work for me. I'm just going to buy these. As you can tell, I love like a reptile print. And these are like a blush tone with blue in it. I thought it was really cool. It has a zipper so I can get in, a low heel boot, but I'm getting rid of these. And you know why? Because they don't work for me. I failed to consider, this was a learning experience. I thought I had it down. I got too cocky. I was like, I'm just gonna buy these. This material, you can tell it's kind of shiny. It's not leather. It doesn't say other than man-made. This part here, my problem area, I talked about like my fat upper foot and that part here on the shoe, it has no give. So when I first put them on, I was like, okay, this will work. And then I walked around and I'm in over time, just having no stretch right here. And also you can't tell, but look from the side, I'm like, that's cute. You look at it from like an aerial view, look how narrow that is. So there's no give here, there's no give here. I, I'm really sad about them because they're like everything I love. It's very rock and roll, very cool, but feminine, if that's what I'm feeling. I even, this is my second pair, because the first pair, as I was getting them on, the zipper broke. So I had to get a replacement pair sent to me. And after all that, I think I'm just gonna get rid of them because I don't reach for them. You know why? Because I'm like, if I have an outfit that calls for this kind of silhouette of a shoe, I'm gonna reach for these. They're lower, more comfortable, the soft leather, like, I'm just not picking those. You have to weigh like your comfort and the look. I'm like, do I really want to sacrifice the comfort of these and pick a different shoe just so I can have a different pattern? It's just not happening. And I'm gonna be a hypocrite and say that I'm not getting rid of these, even though I don't reach for these. Again, this is an ankle booty, black crocodile print. Like, what are you gonna do? Pointed toe. It's just very predictable. I saw these and I was like, you know what? Mm, little, little nervous, but I'm gonna try them. See how different they are? Like, it's a narrower heel. Like, it's not like a wide block heel, but it still has a lot of surface area this way. And it's leaning in. And that's the issue, is this part here. Because all of the support is towards the front of the foot, it really encourages my foot to slide forward into these, which is what makes them really uncomfortable. But I wanna keep them because they're so, I'm putting them on probation. Because they're different enough from these, you can tell they just have a different look to them, that I feel like there are opportunities that that will call for these and not necessarily those. But these might be like, I know I'm sitting all day kind of shoe. Let's go over another pair I'm getting rid of. Not because they don't work for me. They very much work for me. I got these from H&M. These are Divided. You know, that brand that H&M carries. This is a platform lace up boot. It's everything I love. It's wide, plenty of room, also covered in cat hair. What else is new? It's laced up so it can open up to get my foot in. It can also tighten up to keep my foot in. It's got a thick block heel. It's got that boot traction on the bottom. Also, it's a platform, harkening back to the other platform pair I talked about earlier. It's like everything you want as far as like being elevated and kind of wearing a heel. But if you can tell here from the sole, there is a fraction of an inch of elevation between the toe box and the heel. It's like an illusion heel. These are almost flat actually. So this is a good walking, I wanna go out and look cute, but I know I'm gonna be walking drunk from my dorm to the bar. The only reason I'm getting rid of them is just because they just don't feel like my style anymore. Something about the toe, it's like very rounded, which obviously is not what I gravitate towards anymore, but I would 100% recommend this to someone who was into this kind of shoe. I was very much once into this kind of shoe. It's a very like cyber goth moment. I cannot stop saying good things about this. We got one more pair. And I'm not really gonna say that much. These are just Uggs. These are sweater Uggs. And I'm keeping them because this is basically the winter equivalent to my Adidas slide. This is what I walk the dog in when it's cold out. 
So moral of the story, when you are looking for shoes as someone who supinates, who someone who has club feet or club foot, if you want a heel, it should be low, ideally a block heel. Why? You want to make sure you distribute that pressure evenly. You also want to look for something that's going to provide a lot of support. You know the problem areas on your foot. Look at those areas on the shoe and see what it looks like because that's where it's going to be pushing up against all the time. Are the parts where you put a lot of pressure, are those parts reinforced or do they look kind of weak? If there's not a lot of coverage in that area, you might have problems over time. Look at straps. Some straps can be an inconvenience because there's a, sometimes there's a lot of straps on like the fattest part of your foot and it prevents you from being comfortable in the shoe and there's some straps that are adjustable that provide a lot of support. So straps, laces, coverage, look for features that you know are going to keep your foot as locked in as possible, as supported as possible. Look at the soles, especially on flat shoes. You don't want a sole that's like a thin, thin sole. I know a single sole shoe is very popular right now. It's not going to be supported for you over time. If you do want to partake in some of the trends that are going on that might not necessarily be suitable for your feet, just know that that's a give and take, like no judgment. If you want to wear a pair of shoes that you're going to be crying in at the end of the night, but you got the cute Instagram photo, like that's on you, that's fine, like do it. But just make sure that if you do have a shoe like that, don't also have a comfortable shoe that looks fairly similar, because guess what, you're never going to reach for the other one. I highly recommend going through all of your shoes, seeing what you have. I got rid of one, two, three, four, five, six pairs. And I'm just gonna reorganize them a little more intuitively, you know, put my winter ones away where they're not visible, keep my summer ones out. You wanna see what you have so you know what you reach for. You think you have a mental inventory of your shoes, but you really don't. Pay attention to the quality of your shoes. If you are going for cheaper shoes, just make sure that it makes sense for your feet. If you have any other questions about shoes, about brand, about other recommendations, please let me know. I may do a whole video on just like training shoes for club feet because I could go on and on and on about that. So be on the lookout for that. Anyway, I know this wasn't the most exciting video, but I had to do it anyway. So I thought I'd just like bring you along. If you'd like to come along on some of my other uh, purging videos, then let me know. Thanks for watching. Please like this video. Please subscribe. It helps me out a whole lot. It gives me incentive to keep making these videos. What else? What else? What else? Oh, duh. Healthbycf.com. If you want strength training, nutrition training, just some solidarity, some recipe ideas, go check that out. Say hi and go say hi to me at my Instagram at healthbycf as well. So anyway, I will see you in my next video, which I'm not really sure. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to see you guys next. And bye-bye.